Thanks for listening to Exploring the Wine Glass podcast, the podcast for people who love wine. I'm Lori Budd, a UC Davis winemaking program and WSET Level 2 graduate. You can find Exploring the Wine Glass on all the socials as well as your favorite podcast catchers. If you haven't subscribed yet, now's the perfect time. I promise I'll never tell you what to drink, but I'll always share what's in my glass. Hey everyone, thanks for listening in today. I had the pleasure of sitting down with Leah Tarad Hashan, developer of the Staircase program. Born and raised in Anjou, France, Leah turned her love of linguistics into a booming business. You may be thinking to yourself, well, what does this have to do with wine? Well, it has a whole lot to do with wine. Leah has many students who are in the wine industry and have learned French in preparation for their internships or harvest experiences in France. She even gave me a spontaneous lesson, one which I think I failed miserably at, but she says I did quite well. I'll let you be the judge. While you're listening, please swipe or scroll and subscribe, rate, and review Exploring the Wine Glass. It's a great way to show your support let me know who is listening and to help others find us. Slancha. Hi, everybody. Welcome to this episode of Dracaena Wines on Wine. And in these series, basically what we do is we are talking to people, however they are intertwined in the wine industry, and we see basically what they are all about and how they pursuing their passion in the wine industry or sometimes in the outskirts of the wine industry. And... Um, It's all about kind of a one-on-one get to know somebody that is um, in love with wine. And that's what we are all about. So today my guest is Leah and I am going to attempt it, but my American is probably going to destroy it. Tarad Hassan? Hey, oui, oui, bonjour. Hi, Leah Tarad Hassan. Yeah, you, you pronounce it right. Oh, okay. Not too bad. Not too bad. Bonjour. Bonjour. <laughs> so, uh, as I told you, I uh, I practiced uh, French a lot before um, I went to France last year, and I thought I had a basic understanding of it. And um, I got there, and I walked up to the passport prompt, you know, the stamper guy, and. <laughs> It went out of my head. I, you know, I had no idea. Um, he, but he just started speaking in English. He didn't even expect me to understand French. So I get the like one every five words concept, it, you know. But today, um, before we even get started, I have to first give a huge shout out to Elizabeth Bruckner, who is responsible for introducing me to you. Her and her husband listened to the podcast. And she wrote in to me and suggested I reach out to you for a for a podcast interview. And she was amazing in between person introducing uh-huh. us to each other. So thank you, Elizabeth. And um, hi, Elizabeth. Hi, Elizabeth. Thank you. <laughs> so how do you know Elizabeth? So Elizabeth and I are we know each other through French as well. Oh. Um, through uh, our common community of uh, language learners because she's a dedicated language learner and she had uh, some French lessons with me and she learned with the staircase website and one of the um, courses on the website is based on the wine industry so she seems like she made the connection between yeah. your podcast and the staircase and here we are. And uh, here we are. It, it took a little bit of back and forth. I think we started this process about a month and a month ago. But here we are. So let's first start talking about you as a person a little bit. All right. It looks like you started teaching back in 2013. And you've taught over 5,000 hours of French to students in over 51 countries. Mm-hmm on this stair course, uh, staircase platform. So that that's insane. Like, to me, 5,000 hours, I can't even, you know, conceive how much that is. And to 
to so many different countries. So how do people find you? Let's start with that. How do people find you? So you are right, Lori. This is a lot. Um, and I was lucky to be one of the first teachers of my generation surfing on the digital wave of, um, of private tutoring, of language tutoring online. And I started uh, when I was a student, I was in my early 20s, and at that time, uh, I just enjoyed uh, teaching French, and that was, it seems like it reciprocated uh, with, with my students, because uh, um, it quickly became successful. So, yes. Six, <laughs> six years later, still going strong. <laughs> yes, and six years later, um, six years later, um, as you may know, I'm also a linguist by education. So on the birthday of my 5,000th lesson, uh, we decided that it was time to uh, share that experience in the form of a method. So I combined um, most of my experiences and feedbacks from students and we assembled, because there was me, but also a small team of people working with me, we assembled a new website and method based on a step-by-step, -step, more intuitive grammar assimilation uh, with uh, some fun stories that the courses are based on. And the staircase was born. And yes, I continue teaching uh, to my dear students every week, and it's just part of uh, part of a daily routine. And it's and it is, it's a, a joy every day. That's awesome. And again, they can find you at thestaircase.org. So we'll get that right out mm -hmm. there. And first, yes, correct. Uh, so as you said, uh, students they can find me and other teachers on the staircase.org um, so most students they have like one lesson every week okay it's a, it, it, it's a routine based students enjoy that routine uh, but also they can have just one lesson or two see and mm -hmm. Instagram yes uh, students can also find find me find us on Instagram you were born and raised in France in the Anjou area, which is basically the, for those who don't know, it's like the lower portion of the Loire River. Mm -hmm. and, exactly. So and, if you go to Paris and then you drive two hours to the south and you will go through the Loire Valley, you may have heard of the Loire Valley uh, for castles and also vineyards. Um, uh, the Loire Valley is a um, region viticole, as we say in French, like a, a wine region of okay. its own in French, in France. And um, and I'm familiar with with uh, the wines from my from my from my region, as you as you know. Um, so it's something that we have in common. Yes. So as a kid. Growing up in this beautiful, amazing wine region, like, mm. like, I mean, I guess this is kind of a stupid question, but like, did you do normal kid things or like, you know, I mean, you're in the middle of a beautiful vineyard area. Like, what, what, what were some of the things you did growing up? Mm -hmm. So, um, how is um, wine or vineyards? How are, how are they intertwined just in daily life? Um, so my grandmother used to have um, a vineyard all her life. Uh, so uh, that was um, just just part go, going during life. the weekend uh, in the region of Saumur. Uh, also through the seasons, uh, the, the harvest times in uh, September, October, um, meeting with the winemakers of. Um, who they have their their own different values when making processes um, in the in the French Loire Valley. Uh, we have some of pioneers of the organic right. uh, organic and natural wines movement. For for instance, um, Catherine et Pierre Breton, who you may have you may have heard of them. So they were one of the pioneers. They make 
Um, just fantastic wine. Um, just recently, I, I was in Montreal last June, and I found Pierre and Catherine's wine there. Um, it was such a pleasure to see them, <laughs> to see that their success goes so far. And this uh, organic wine production is growing um, more and more in the, in the Loire Valley. Right. And so, um, were you working the farm? Like, was that your vacation going to, you know, go to grandma's vineyard on summer vacation and having to work the vineyard? Yeah, so hiking. So personally, I wasn't really involved okay. um, into, into working in it, but more just um, having picnic in the van. <laughs> Um, or, as I said previously, um, um, helping with selling the wine oh, okay. and, and tasting and wine, 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 wine tasting uh, when I was when I was older. And also, in France, it's common to introduce uh, just young, yeah. young youngsters and children to wine. Just very tiny, <laughs> like just a little, just a little. Sip. Um, but yes, it, it's common to to introduce ch children at an early age uh, for for tasting, for appreciating the flavor. And do you, do you do you do that too? Is that common as well? Um, um, yeah. I don't. I don't know. I I know that like in France and Italy, it's you know when they sit down for dinner, even at a young age, they they get that taste so that they can learn to appreciate what they're around and what the wine is about. It's so much a big part of their culture. Here in America, I don't know how much that actually occurs. I think um, children who grew up with parents who own vineyards and wineries, mm -hmm. I'm sure that's involved in their culture a little bit. Um, but I don't, th I don't think it's the same as as in, in Europe and stuff. It, it's a different... I mean, most children... Don't like the taste of wine because it it tastes very bitter. <laughs> right, when, the tannin. When you're a child, right. so so it's really just a little simple. Well, maybe maybe that's the trick. You know, if they if we had our children drinking at a younger age or tasting at a younger age, they won't go binge drinking when they're you know 18, 17 years old. You know, you mm. you're gaining an appreciation of it at a young age. And you learn how to appreciate it and oh, yes. respect it. You're yeah. right, Lori. Because yeah. uh, uh, we we just getting used to it at a younger age. Um, it it's just it becomes something more common. Mm -hmm. So um, so the, it's it's all well balanced. Right. It's not it's not such a big deal when you when you you know step away from mom and dad so much. Exactly. You know? Right. <laughs> Um, so your grandmother, uh, how much wine did, did she like produce? Did she sell? She, you were saying that you helped sell. So she actually sold the wine or sold wine. And so that was a part of her life when I was very young and I don't remember because she, she's now retired. Well, I have an anecdote about, about it. Um, well, so she she has she kept some uh, vintage from the time when she would do the wine making, um. and uh, and so um, in in the cave the cellar right uh, it's it's like a cave because it's uh, in the in the Loire Valley there's a part especially in Saumur called les troglodytes. Look, les troglodytes are uh, caves or okay. cellars. That dug into, dug into the, the stone. The, it's it's limestone, no right? Way. So it's dug into limestone. So in that troglodyte um, um, cellar that she has, she she has kept a vintage of um, years nineteen and uh, eight um, for English numbers, but eighty nine and ninety, which were very good years. And she would just give them around uh, for family. Mm, oh, that's awesome. Swines. That's awesome. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Uh, uh, I wish that we had some history like that. We, you know, 
We we're the first well, you're, you're we're the, the first winemakers in our family. You know, we're the first winemakers in our family. So um, <laughs> we, uh, uh, nobody was giving us wine <laughs> from when they were producing wine. Well, that's that's even better. You, you got you got to that was a real adventure. Yes. Yes, it is. It is, and we do. But it still is now. Yeah, we do. We do love it. Um, good stuff. Um, all right. So, I, you know, when I interview people, I have to do a little snooping around on the internet and see, you know, what's going on. Um, and according to your LinkedIn profile, you um, actually graduated with a bachelor's degree in English literature. From mm -hmm, the that's correct. I really enjoyed this kind of letter. So, oh my God, that's one of my favorites. That is one of my favorites. Mm -hmm, the um, letter A yeah. on the leather cover. Yeah. My uh, my husband hates it. He's like, how how can you read that over and over again? Or how can you watch that movie? I'm like, oh my God, it's such a good book. But uh, so, what made you go? Like, you're in France, like. What's take us through your processing of where where you thought you were going to go with this studying, you know, American literature. Um, so, my, so you're asking about my education background, right? So you you chose to study English literature while you were growing up and living in France. So, like, mm -hmm. what what was your career goal? when you said, I'm going to go English literature? Mm -hmm. So my career goal, uh, I always wanted to work in language education. So as far as I was um, a teenager, starting when I was 10, 11, uh, I learned English, mostly chatting on the internet. Uh, so at that time, that was the years 2000. Uh, so it wasn't that common at that time. Uh, but that's how I got to learn just more typing more fluently. Um, so this and also I learned uh, English, uh, some Spanish uh, with uh, pen pals, uh, so um, handwriting. Oh wow. <laughs> you know, snail mail, hand, handwriting with pen, pen pals uh, from, just from Spain, from Canada. And I mostly learn languages just like that. So Spanish, English through pen calling. Also, I worked some time in Switzerland where, where I learned some uh, German basics. And also being around Chinese people to learn some Chinese sentences. Wow. So, um, so I, I always wanted to communicate these different forms of language learning and work in language education. So the path, the path was uh, a bachelor, which I which I chose to be in English literature. So it was British English, uh, British English literature mostly, and then a master's in linguistics and um, and uh, science education. In French, we call it pedagogy. La, la pédagogie des langues, the, um, the science of language mm -hmm. teaching. And then um, I, I started uh, working as a French teacher online, like Skype, and used my, my linguistic uh, education and experience uh, to then build courses, materials, uh, courses, learning materials, and then the staircase. And that's how step, step by step. It leads to to a career. So does that answer? Right. Your yes, question? yes, it did. So as a as a young person, you knew you wanted to be in the language, you know, sharing language with people, and that's awesome because not too many people go to school and start something, you know, if they have a path of what they're going to want to be, and then loads of people aren't in that field that mm -hmm. they want to be in. So that's awesome. Let's bring it back to wine. I I would love to visit your area of France. Um, I was in Paris, I was in Bordeaux, um, but I've never been to the Loire Valley, the Chenon, and you know, our passion is Cabernet Franc. So like, that's like the, the mothership calling me to go home. What are your favorite wines from the region? Favorite winery? Um, you had mentioned the one in Montreal, but if somebody was going to that region, what would you say is a must do, mm -hmm. must visit type of 
vacation? Mm-hmm. So in the Loire Valley, uh, the um, so some wines, um, Chinon, Sancerre, um, the wines by Catherine and Pierre Breton. They're they're classics. Every year they have uh, different different vintage that they um, that that come out. You see, so visiting the Loire Valley, uh, you can go to Saumur, so you can go by train or by car, and then from Saumur, uh, go up the Loire River uh, to the village of Fontevraud, and there's a wine route. So you can follow that wine route and then stop at different winemakers. Uh, stores or little shops and do tasting there. My favorite personally are reds. I like reds. Uh, from Provence, I like uh, wines from Chateau Bisky and the Gigondas, Gigondas area, mm-hmm. Marmoiron area. Whites, I love whites from Alsace. Oh, uh, yes. This is Riesling et Pigue pour Tramino. You can never be disappointed with them. There. I like the I like the mineral. Yes. Vibe. Yes. And recently, I also discovered uh, well, whites from Austria. Mm-hmm. Um, just a, such a good surprise. Pleasant, yes. A good surprise. Yeah. Yes. They're kind of you. You talk back and forth between Austria, uh, you know, and Alsace, and you know, it's there's. I think there could be a debate of who likes what more, but. Um, I think they're both very, very exceptional wines, and I'd be more than happy mm-hmm. to have either of either of them in my glass. Um, so you're now um, you're now back. Well, not back. You now are in America, and you you're living in Virginia. Correct. So, so that's is this the first time that you're living outside of France, like you know, or you know, outside for. You said you went to Switzerland for a little while, but... Um. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, so right now I'm in Virginia, as you said. I'm continuing my education. I'm studying uh, management, accounting, oh. and business. Um, and about different countries. So I have spent most of my life in France. Uh, also about two years in Helsinki, Finland, and uh, Switzerland, where I used to work. And, and now Virginia. So that's diverse. And now I enjoy Virginia. I discover the American culture uh, from um, from the inside, which is a, a very precious experience because uh, America uh, exports its culture um, all around the world through entertainment. But from the inside, it's very different. And I, I like American people. They yeah. have such good hearts. Um. Was it like culture shock? So my husband and I grew up on the East Coast mm-hmm. in the New York area. We're from mm-hmm. New Jersey. So we grew up on the East Coast and we spent one year in Tennessee, which is South. Mm-hmm. And it drove both of us crazy because in New York, it's in, you know, where we grew up, it's go, 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 go. Like, you know, mm-hmm. you're this... And you go to Tennessee and you go out for dinner and, you know, they bring you the menu 40 minutes after you sit down. And, you know, five hours later, you're like wailing to try to get the, you know, the waiter. It's like, and, it's like France, like the South of France. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, all right. So maybe you're, maybe it's a little bit closer, um, you know, like, but in New York, you're, uh, you can have almost a, you know, a full out meal in an hour, you know, like they want you in and out. So it was a very big culture shock. And even moving to California, it's a different culture shock. You know, we joke all the time that, you know, we'll be at the curb and a car will stop for us to mm. walk across the street. And we're like, oh, that wouldn't happen in Jersey, you know, or that, you know. Um, so there's there's differences in how people act in their different regions. So, like, what do you have anything that, like, you're like, wow, that now that you're in Virginia, that people are, like, different? Sure, of course. <laughs> uh, there's good wells. Uh, yes. For instance, the nature is uh, wonderful. Oh. Because Virginia is uh, warm but humid. Uh, so the, 
the, ve the vegetation is lush, ver verdant. And this year, there's an incredible amount of butterflies. Oh, uh, yes. Just butterflies and, and biodiversity, so different ber birds. And what's interesting to me is that all that cohabitates, so there's a cohabitation between this biodiversity and a very urban la landscape, cars, highways. That's a, that has been a cultural shock for me. So many highways, uh, <laughs> cars, six lanes, highways. Right, right. <laughs> um, it's very different from the narrow streets in the Loire Valley. Right. In, the Lo in the Loire Valley. So next time you go to Saumur and go and visit um, then going through the wine tour, you'll see that you'll go through narrow roads. Okay. So yeah, so that has been a culture so um, a culture shock. But, the, but still, it's nature and very urbanized uh, landscape at the, at the same time. Okay. And what about the what about the wines you're finding in Virginia? Are you uh, able to find? Home home wines? Are you exploring out more of American wines? Um, we've been to uh, wine to winemakers uh, last uh, last summer last year. Um, still, I'm more exploring wines from California uh, and organic wines. Just recently, as I mentioned before, Austria, Brazil. Uh, I'm, I was um, I listened to your podcast about the Brazilian, Brazilian sparkling wines, and I really want to try that. I can if you can find them, grab them because for the price that you're paying, they are they're really really exceptional for when for mm, the price you're I paying. I love you. Yes. The wines that you're experiencing now, like the, you said, you're finding the Austrian wines and, and Alsace wines. Did you have trouble getting them in France? Mm, in fr um, so when, you, when I'm in France, I'm very loyal to my region. Right. So just by Laura Valley and, and being like a region list of wine. The United States is different from our open minded <laughs> and I want to explore everything. Uh, I'm very interested in the new world uh, wines. So you, you, I think you call that the world. Yes. Um, I'm, um, I'm hungry for more. I, will, uh, uh, I love to discover more. That's awesome because we always say the best way to learn about wine is to fill another glass, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fill another glass and learn more about wine. Yeah, have, a, have another sip. And now a word from our sponsor. Exploring the Wine Glass is brought to you by Dracina Wines. Dracina Wines is an artisan winery located in Paso Robles, California. They have been producing wine since 2013. Their first vintage began with one wine, their classic Cabernet Franc, which received a 91 in wine enthusiast. Since then, they have increased production, received several accolades, including double gold medals in the San Francisco Chronicle Wine Competition, and consistent 90 plus ratings. In addition to their classic Cabernet Franc, they now produce a single vineyard, single clone reserve Cabernet Franc and a rosé of Syrah. Although they've increased production every year, they continue to sell out each vintage. Find out more about Dracina Wines and their award-winning wines at dracinawines.com and let them help turn your moments into great memories. Right. Now, you had mentioned that your area was um, one of the first to go organic. Um, and that was like early, like 80s. So that was way ahead of of us. Was it just one winemaker, one vineyard decided, you know, organic is good. And then it started to spread like, oh, yeah, this is nice. This is good. Like, how did this trend start in your area? So some of our listeners, you probably have read uh, the book by Kermit Lynch, uh, so Adventures on the Wine Route. So in that book, Kermit Lynch uh, goes through France and different winemaking regions in France, and he describes how uh, the wine industry, winemakers, um, were becoming more conventional, um, losing the tradition uh, right. for for the sake of production of 
of safety, of stability. And that has happened um, mainly in Bordeaux. Well, that's where. And now in Bordeaux, it's still very, it's very strong. This type of, of production. Right. May, uh, in the in the eighties and nineties, there was um, a, a movement of going back to tradition and the mingling uh, environmental uh, values with also health concerns uh, on wine consumptions and reducing the the amount of pesticides and um, do you say do you use that word permaculture permaculture uh, biodynamics mm -hmm. Bio biodynamics biodynamics permaculture I think anything that's better for the earth is great I think that people in general take 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 from what mother nature is giving and at some point we need to give 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 you know we need to start getting mm -hmm. into balance um, and I, it's not easy. No, and it's not easy because um, because the, the weather pests. Uh, they're they're not always a farmer's friend. No, not at all. It's hard to find a good balance. So I was I was impressed that they were starting it back in the '80s. I think that that mm -hmm. that was ahead of of the the trend big time. Let's go back to the staircase. Talking about about your the way you teach somebody how to speak French. So. I had shared with you in the email that I used an app. I thought it was good. I, it was cute. You know, there were little cartoon characters mm -hmm. and little, you know, things. And I think that storytelling and things like that are the way to learn a lot easier. Um, I say to this day that in high school, I took three years of Spanish and graduated with nothing more than hola que pasa donde mm -hmm. esta el baño you know like that i took one semester in college and i was pretty darn fluent and it was because my professor we were never in the classroom he would take us out and we would play soccer and as the ball hit us in the head he would say la cabeza you know uh, you know <laughs> like he was he was teaching us by moving and by associating things, where in high school she was writing a word on on a blackboard, basically. Take us through the staircase. How does the staircase teach somebody French? Yeah. Um, so the way you learn, just going back on this black uh, blackboard and learning in school and more or less conventional. Um, this is this is good. The, the spending time and learning at school is good, even if it's academic, uh, because we need both. To, we, when learning, we need that exposure. Um, there's this, this current in linguistics um, talking about comprehensive input. Comprehensive input it means that you have to spend time reading or watching a movie um, and focusing, being being really present when watching that movie. So all that you did matters, and um, I think it helped uh, when you were then playing soccer uh, with um, that more dynamic teacher. It, it helped absorb the words then in real life in action, just because because you heard you heard of it already. And so going to the staircase, so the staircase it combines stories with lots of dialogues. Um, and um, audio, so there's yeah. lots of listening activity and active writing activity based on translation. Uh, we also have cartoons uh, that are made uh, by Ben Dole. Okay, Ben, if you're hearing us, uh, bonjour Ben. Look, ben is uh, he's an American cartoonist and he started illustrating the, the, um, some of the courses for beginners. We have courses for all levels, beginner, intermediate, advanced, and beginners will find cartoons. Um, one of my values uh, as a teacher and student is to be active, to learn actively. So uh, it can be active writing, because uh, we spend our days writing, either text messaging right. or posting on social, social media. Um, 
writing is not necessarily academic. Uh, it can be just, as I say, through social media. So in the staircase, there's this active writing, uh, practicing the phrases that are learned through translation, through activities uh, with synonyms, also uh, spaces for expressive, expressing oneself. Uh, in French, we say de l'écriture expressive, uh, expressive, expressive writing. Oh, okay. So there's this, these are areas where you can use what you learned to introduce yourself um, and get some feedback uh, by teachers on the website, etc. And as I mentioned, the teachers on the website, that's the other important part, is that a student can also take private tutoring in option. So some students will just take the courses and some others uh, will take the plan with courses and teachers. Uh, so that includes usually weekly lessons. That's the most popular uh, plan. So there's uh, one lesson every week. Uh, so it can be uh, every Wednesday uh, in, in the morning at the same time, or some students enjoy more flexibility. And during these um, le lessons, uh, lessons on Skype, uh, it's active practice, um, it's conversation uh, adapted to all levels. So even absolute beginners uh, can uh, practice their oral conversation through some uh, some activities like uh, we could do it together we could make a demonstration if we or if you if you'd like would you like to make a to do this sure <laughs> I don't okay, know. So are you ready for oh my god oh my god you're gonna you're gonna quiz me five minutes of French you're gonna quiz yeah <laughs> okay uh, so what we're going to do is I will use basic sentences for introducing myself and you can mimic my sentences then and adapt them for yourself okay we'll okay. try yep we'll try <laughs> okay so when you're ready you say je suis prête je suis prête okay. je m'appelle Léa je m'appelle Laurie je suis française je suis américaine J'habite en Virginie. Ma. No, I need that again. Mm -hmm. okay. J'habite en Virginie aux USA. J'habite en Virginie. I, I don't know where to go. I'm lost. Level three. And then level one, step three, I'm lost. <laughs> non, non, c'est bon, c'est bon, c'est bon. Uh, donc, when in English you say to live, uh, to live in a place, in French we say habiter. Oh, okay. Okay, okay, so, uh, okay. j'habite okay. Virginia. Okay, oh, okay, you were saying Virginia. I got it, I got it. Je vis California. J'habite en Californie. J'habite en California. Je suis professeur de français. Je suis winemaker. <laughs> Like a winemaker is a word that's repeated a lot in the course of the vignoble. Winemaker in French is vigneron. 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 I actually do that. I do that. <laughs> vigneron. So, uh, one more. So, see, I forgot. I'm horrible. Je suis, je suis. Je, je suis professeur de français. Okay. Je suis vigneron. Okay. <laughs> bye bye. Yay! Thank you. I am horrible at languages. I really, I, my brain does not. And the worst thing is. Attends, c'était bien. That was pretty good. <laughs> the worst thing is, is that my brain goes back to Spanish. Like when I was taking the French lessons, I kept inserting Spanish words mm -hmm. into the French. I mean, luckily they were somewhat similar <laughs> for a lot mm -hmm. of things. Um, but yeah, um, I'm pretty bad in language. I, I don't know if that's right brain, left brain, or whatever, but... I think that was pretty good. Yeah? Because what you did was just mimicking. And mimicking is... Um, it's a way that's intuitive. It's like it's back from our 
instincts of language learning. Um, uh, there's your this uh, American linguist Noam Chomsky, uh, who defined uh, the the concept of language language learning being hardwired in the brain okay. in, in, in this mimicking aspect that we just did together yes. that you can do in every language that staircase teachers do as well. Uh, so that's a way just to, to reveal the, the language in you. All right, so I, I'm all right. I think you can get there. I can get there. <laughs> <laughs> so in your, you said that you have different levels. So I have to say I cracked up at when I opened up the lesson because you came running up the stairs. I thought that was pretty clever. <laughs> Come running up the <laughs> stairs. And your the first thing I saw was you speaking in French and the words going underneath. And I like learning that way. That's one of the ways I, I like to learn. Um, so when we go to a foreign country, I always sit and watch TV that's, that's got the American... Yeah, with, with, with subtitles. Yes, yes. Yeah, so it's the best way to learn. Right. Most of people are visual learners. Right. Uh, so, yes, you should uh, learn languages with looking at the subtitles. Yes. Okay. So I, I love that. And then we went into the lesson, and it was about uh, giving away a key. And, you know, you were going through the pronouns. He gives a key, she gives a key, and then the sister yes, and the correct. brother. Um, yes. So what you're describing is Le Vignoble. So this is the course uh, which is based on the winemaking family, on a, on a family of winemakers. Uh, so the course that you went to, there's 13 chapters, and each chapter covers uh, one specific aspect of the language. Uh, so the first one goes through all possible verb forms. So it's a way to review uh, all French verb forms, mostly for, for uh, people who already learned French a uh, right. couple of years at school. Yeah. And there's another chapter, uh, chapter 7, which is called La Louvre, uh, which is about how to describe people in uh, in French there's a chapter 14 la météo which is talking about the weather there's chapter uh, 23 which is uh, about comparative and especially it's a scene of comparing wines there you go and it, and it's and it takes place at a wine mm -hmm. tasting competition um, and uh, th there's also some scenes about uh, gardening a growing oh, race okay. Right. Okay. So if somebody was coming to the staircase and it was they've never taken French in their lives, right? Mm -hmm. So they're they're not going to start where I went in. You know, uh, be, they're going to go to your beginning level. And you had mentioned that that beginning level there's cartoons and things like that. So mm -hmm. um, take us through like what if I if I signed up for the staircase. And I go into that first lesson. Like, how much time do you do your does your average student spend on each of those steps before they're mm -hmm. confident to move on to the next step? Yeah, so the beginner courses, uh, one of them, the most popular is Ma Première Leçon, my first lesson. Okay. So this one takes, um, in average, five to six hours to complete. Uh, and it's one with cartoons, with reading activities. It's um, well, I really didn't even have children and teenagers using it. Uh, it's called Ma Première Leçon. Uh, then there's another beginner's course called Premier Pas. This one, Premier Pas, covers all the education, the, the, all the, the curriculum from A1 to B1. A1 and B1, I don't know if you're familiar with that, uh, but yeah. they're, the, um, uh, they're the, the ways defined by the C, uh, CR, so that's the European Council uh, for Language Education. Oh, okay. So it, it, it's like, it's, it's the beginner level. And then if you're an intermediate learner, you can take, like, you should choose the course Un Américain à Paris, and it's based on the story of John, who is an American, and he's a friend of the family of winemakers. And he's going to meet 
the main character, Lana. Uh, her full name is Eliana, or her short name, Lana. He's going to meet her in Paris, and their adventures in Paris um, oh. are they, they, they're the, um, like the, the layers, the pillars of the courses that cover most notions expected of intermediate level. Okay. And then the advanced learners, that's un un cours de perfectionnement, perfectioning, perfectionnement. Uh, they should choose Le Vignoble, which is a course in 30 chapters and which is much more deep. It goes into details. Um, but, um, I, oui, it goes into details and the average time is seven to eight months to complete Le Vignoble. It's a uh, They're, they're very rich courses in terms of content, a variety of you know, vocabulary building, etc. So I hope you, I hope you come and try it. Yeah. So the uh, I also noticed that when I logged in that um, you have Quizlet cards to help people out so that they can go in and you know do Quizlet, and that you have a Facebook group also, right? Where yes, that's a community right. so can come can together. Find on Facebook, on, on Facebook, sorry, on Facebook, uh, so this guy case, there's the Quizlet, which makes it easier to use on smartphone, tablets, because uh, the staircase itself, the website, I recommend using it on a broad screen. It's much more comfortable. It helps focus. And um, uh, our integration, our integration with Quizlet uh, is more for flashcards, reviewing vocabulary, etc. Okay. That's I thought it was great that you had a community so that, you know, people can that are going through the same process can be together and talk to each other and ask questions and um and I also saw that there were when I was taking the lesson that underneath people had made comments. Mm -hmm. about certain yes, things true. and answer, you know, people, you know, sometimes you were answering them or another professor was answering them or uh, sometimes other classmates were answering them. So there's, there's, there seems to be a lot of support in it in, built into this program. Oh, yes. And um, that mattered to me when creating the staircase because uh, um, uh, now there's lots of good apps and solutions uh, online, but there's something that I think is missing. It's the human aspect of it. Uh, so um, I believe in machine learning, but more in, in human learning and in human intelligence. And, um, and so we have these um, discussion areas that are f available for everybody. And then students who have more budget and who want to practice their their speaking. They can also uh, book lessons with teachers. Uh, so there's different plans uh, to make it the, the best uh, learning experience for everybody. And so um, your, your plans, are they a monthly plan? Is it a uh, Is there add-ons? Like, how does somebody, if they go to staircase.org to find you and they want to learn French, or you actually also have Spanish, okay? Um, yes, correct. How, how, like, how does somebody purchase, you know, am I purchasing it? Oh, my God, I've got to learn French in, in, in this amount of time, or am I purchasing a lesson, and if it takes me five hours and it takes you one hour, it's kind of the same thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you're correct, there's a uh, French and Spanish currently available, and three plans, three options. But the first one is just, just subscribing. So for subscribing, you will get access to the course My First Lesson, um, which, which is pretty comprehensive for beginners, and you will, you will also get seasonal courses. So we have Uh, courses for the 31st of October, also oh. December 25th, uh, which are seasonal or festive courses, <laughs> um, and usually with guests, uh, for instance. For Halloween, we have American author, American novelist, Cody Schramm, 
the rights uh, in histoire qui était pas frightening school story for Halloween um, and the course is based on that so that's what you get for the just a subscription and that's a monthly then, that's a monthly subscription uh, it's it's free it's, it's just um, that's the first plan is the free subscription oh wow so somebody can take your first lesson for just signing up for free yes yeah, correct oh wow and then the, the second plan Uh, the enterprise is um, $10, just a little less, it's $9, $9 monthly. And for, for that, uh, students get all courses and courses that are all year, well, I mean, throughout all the year. So that's premier pas, the full course for beginners, en America, Paris, the full course for intermediate level, and le vignoble. And, um, And then the third plan is uh, with a teacher. So it starts at 79 per month. So 79 per month. You get 30 minutes conversation every week with a tutor. And then depending on how, or if you want more times, uh, more time per week, uh, then there's um, uh, higher plans uh, depending on your budget and also availability. $80 is really cheap. That's that's $40 an hour to tutor. Mm -hmm. So that yeah, I think that's totally a well justified price. A, yes, it's a good price. And also we have good teachers because um, um, so now private tutoring is a new trend, new trend and there's lots of very good platforms. Um, but what's, what makes the staircase teachers uh, different is that we select the most popular teachers all around the web and all our teachers have a minimum of 2,000 hours of experience um, and that's, our, that's yeah. our entry criteria to become a staircase teacher. So that way we guarantee um, just um, a reliable tutor to, to practice, learn, or Spanish yeah. conversation with. And with a subscription plan, which is unique to the staircase, this is what allows us uh, to give a more competitive price with teachers of reputation. Wow. Well, that's I, I think that's impressive. I, I think that that's a... a For four, it's really forty dollars an hour, and you're getting all of the lessons plus somebody there to help you through them. I, I think that's great. Sure, and we, we great. love what we do. Teaching mm -hmm. is a passion. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a, it is also a competitive field, um, and and we want to just to offer the best for for learners and to encourage learning because language learning is good. It's good for business. It's good for understanding people who live in your community. It's good for, for peace, for good relationship building in our world. So we promote that, and uh, I hope that it continues. And so thanks a lot. Thank you very much, Marie. Merci beaucoup. <laughs> uh, just for giving for giving me the time absolutely to, uh, absolutely i i love the idea and i'm gonna bring i'm gonna the last thing we're gonna talk about i just want to bring it back to the winery um and winemaking and how you know uh, elizabeth had mentioned that you had been teaching people who were going to spend like an internship or something like similar to that in France and you were teaching them how to do that. So I just wanted to full circle that back to why you're on Dracina Wines on Wine. If, if somebody is going to go to France and work in the wine industry, um, you know, like I mentioned, when I went to Bordeaux, they all knew I was American. I was there for a week. They, they were speaking English. But I think if somebody is going to go to France and work in France, they're going to expect you to speak French, you know, um, and that's where you come in. If, if these people are going to do their internships, like wine, you know, people in the wine industry travel to different regions to learn different processes. They could come to you 
and get the basis of so that they at least feel confident in presenting themselves to yeah. the wineries. Yeah, yeah sure. For for winemakers uh, listening to us or just wine lovers who plan to go to France, um, being able to say bonjour, comment allez-vous? Je viens des États-Unis. Being able to introduce oneself in French, to greet, the greetings in French, it makes such a difference. Uh, it, it it helps build a relationship. Of, of confidence, a good relationship with the people. You know, there's this quote by Mandela that told to the to talk to somebody in the language in their mother language, and you will talk to the language of their heart. heart. Okay, Mandela said that better than me. That's <laughs> the idea. Right, right. I think that if you attempt to speak the homeland's language, the home person's language, it automatically creates. A different environment than you know than yeah. expecting them to speak your language when you're in their country, mm -hmm. <laughs> and and that's that's what we that's what we work on with our students. So for beginners who are going to go to France, then they will practice greetings, good pronunciation, so pronouncing the the, the essential phrases right. Uh, so to build that that good communication, that good good ground uh, with um, French local people, and um, with more advanced learners, so intermediate and and uh, advanced learners, Le Vignoble is uh, it's a learning adventure. It's good for students who want to revive their French or who feel that their French is a little rusty. And they can combine Le Vignoble with some conversation practice with teachers. And then when they come to France, um, whether for business or for just hobby, uh, they, they will be more, more prepared and make the experience more enjoyable. Mm -hmm. Right. Excellent. All right. It's game time. Are you ready to play the, my little game of opposites? I don't see. I don't see. Oui. Oui. Okay. So uh, we will start with non wine related terms and then we will kind of slowly get into wine related terms. All right. Okay. And remember, there are no wrong answers. All right. It's whatever pops in your head first. Okay. All right. Here we go. Night or day? Night or? Night or day. Dusk. Dusk. Oh, there you go. There you go. Okay, so how do you say night in French? Nuit. Louis? Nuit. La nuit. La nuit. Okay. And day? Le jour. Come on. Bonjour. Jou oh, bonjour. Right. Okay. Sunset or sunrise? Sunrise. Sunrise. And how do you say sunrise? I'm gonna I'm gonna put you to work here. <laughs> <laughs> de soleil. Lever de soleil. Le vit soleil. Okay. Um, black or white? White. How do you say it in French? Um, blanc. 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 <laughs> I got one. <laughs> Walk or run? Plutôt, ça, ça dépend. Walk. Walk. <laughs> well, it's better to in, just enjoy what's around, to see what's around. Okay. Uh, food or drink? <laughs> Both. <laughs> okay. Uh, so drink is see is bebe. Be this it. What? What? Oh, I wasn't even. Oh, see, I was going Spanish again. Spanish. We're in Spanish. You're right. Okay. Beber. Okay. So how do you say it in French? En français, c'est boire. 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 Okay. Old world or new world? <sighs> it's like black and white. <laughs> They go together. <laughs> okay. Um, I love I love that we keep the best from all days and just leave some leave some freedom so that mm. the new can can raise Wait. from ashes, you know, the phoenix. Oh the phoenix. Like okay. Okay. Uh sweet wine or dry wine? Dry. Okay. Bubbles or still? Still. Oak or stainless? Oak or stainless? Oak, metal? oak barrel or stainless steel? So, you know, mm -hmm. oak influence I or... Think sentimental. 
Okay. okay. <laughs> Uh, drink now or drink later? Drink now. Uh, do you like blends or single varietals? Hmm. My palate uh, likes blends, and um, when exploring for tasting, I like single varietals just to get to know no. better. To know what that varietal is supposed to taste like. Yes. Okay. Uh, vintage or non-vintage? Vintage. Cork or screw cap? Cork. Mm -hmm. just, just like oak. Okay. Um, so. Napa or Sonoma? Mm, can you respond for me? Yeah, so, yeah, that's a tough one for you. Uh, that would be like, um, uh, uh, what would that be like? I guess, like, Bordeaux or Loire. So, it's so then Sonoma. Okay. Uh, commercial yeast or indigenous yeast? Indigenous. Uh, Bordeaux or Rhone? Rhone. And warm climate or cool climate? Cool. Cool climate. All right. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So thank merci. You, thank you so much. Merci. Merci beaucoup. Thanks. Oui, merci, merci, merci à, nos, à notre audience. Merci. <laughs> I've got this much, but you know what? I am not. I am going to go to the staircase, and I am going to start going over the that beginner course again, so that mm -hmm. I can become more confident in it. Because. Oui, bien sûr. Oui, oui. You should start the ma première leçon au premier pas, and also with it with a tutor. Uh, it's good for uh, help with pronunciation, and it's so much warm. I mean, right. it's, it's such a human connection. Yes, because I'm sure I, I will mispronounce things left and right. If you listen, right, I make fun of myself on all of the podcasts that I make. I can't pronounce things correctly, um, and that's after I research how to say it. I still can't say them correctly. <laughs> that's part of learning. Yep. Part of the learning process. Yes. So thank you very much, Leo, for joining me. It was awesome. And I love being able to share, you know, your story and helping um, people hopefully learn French so that, you know, we all want to go to France. That's all us Americans talk about, you know, wine lovers talk about is going to France. So I think that using the staircase, you know, is a nice way to go and be a little bit more part of the culture versus just intruding on the culture. Yeah, sure. And so for anybody come to France, France is a great time to come and visit. And if you would like just some tips, um, um, I'll be very happy to give you some just secret places to know, secret yeah. villages to go and visit and, and enjoy your stay in France as best. Awesome. Thank you so much. And again, anybody who's interested, it's thestaircase.org, which is where you can go to find Leah and to learn French. So, Et voilà. all right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Laurie. This has been another episode of Exploring the Wine Glass. Thanks for listening. If you have suggestions on what topics you would like me to discuss, please reach out on social media. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook as Exploring the Wine Glass. I'm also on LinkedIn as Lori Hoyt Bud. Of course, you can always email me at exploringthewineglass at gmail.com. If you enjoyed our podcast, please rate, review, and subscribe on your favorite podcast catcher to help others find me more easily. Until next week. Slancha.